Hi everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to the On Track Podcast. Today we'll be speaking with Yisak Bot, all the way from Israel. He's the founder and CTO of BQR Reliable Engineering. He'll talk about what derating is and how you can work on the schematic level with their simulation software to absolutely eliminate field failures. I think you'll enjoy this one. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to All Team's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, Isak, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Israel. It's a joy to have you, and we're looking forward to learning about what you do and what BQR does. Thank you very much, and have a great day there. Thank you. So, Izak has been a sponsor at the last two All Team Live events, and last time he even did a talk um, about a very interesting um, technology that BQR offers that is particularly um, applicable to engineers who who lay out boards and and it's sort of something uh, related to reliability that we don't always think of so I think you're going to enjoy this so Isaac why don't you jump in and tell us about your professional background and then tell us a little bit about BQR okay so first of all I started many years ago in the Israeli DOD and I served there about 10 years in the reliability engineering of very big systems and uh, I learned how the uh, system works and fails. And uh, we started the company just after uh, that um, in order to develop software and uh, methods how to improve the robustness of those systems uh, in the design uh, before the system failed in the field. So I imagine coming from the DOD, <laughs> you had some exposure to um, reliability is always key when it comes to military applications. So I'm sure that sort of tuned you to uh, really thinking about um, field reliability over time. Yeah, mostly we after we buy the equipment, we need to run them for 20 or 30 years. And this means a, long, a very long time. And uh, if you have many failures, that uh, means that uh, you are losing money and uh, they will not operate in the field. So we need to um, uh, develop the method how you um, design better systems in the design phase using the design capture tools. So since most of our listeners here are designers, engineers, and designers, what are two or three common field failures that you s tend to see? Uh, for example, if you have a CPU and uh, suddenly in the field they just make a reboot. So uh, yeah, imagine an aircraft that fly and the aircraft computer suddenly stop working. And this is uh, a very big problem. <laughs> so, um, and uh, this is one of the uh, problems that we uh, can detect uh, in the design and uh, um, helping the designer uh, to correct this design so such a failure will not occur in the field. Okay, what's another one besides a CPU reboot? Um, uh, you may have um, safety functions um, and everyone knows that the safety function, if you put it together with a non-safety function in one chip or in one board, if the non-safety function fails, it affects the safety function. So we, you, you need to separate uh, the, uh, the design in such a way that failures in the non-safety function will not affect the safety function. Uh, and the additional failure is that if you have a DC to DC converter on the, on the board, you want to test it if the voltage is correct. But today you have many uh, DC to DC converters on uh, the board and uh, you sample the voltage of all of them 
uh, to one ADC. And the problem that is the those uh, DC to DC are located in different places on the board. And designers sometimes forget to connect them to the same ground. So you have DC to DC, which uh, runs from a different uh, ground. And now you are checking them. And uh, it's become a, a big issue in the field because you don't know from where the, the uh, problem comes from. So f- from a lot of our designers that are EEs that are laying out their own boards, they're doing the schematic and the layout many times. And so the things that you're talking about, your your talk at um, Altium Live, you talked about derating, which was something I wasn't familiar with. So can you talk a little bit about... Um, you know, how it sort of begins in the in schematic and, and what that derating sort of means. Yeah, derating means, let's say, we can take a, for a simple example of a, of a lift and elevator that carry five people of, of 100 kilo. So, um, and if you put a cable that can carry only the 500 kilo, it became a risk because after 10 times, the cable will tear. So mm-hmm. you need to take a cable of 2,000 kilo, so in uh, four times, so, so you have a, a safety factor. And the same is in uh, electronic. Uh, you cannot take a capacitor of 5 volt and put on it 5 volt. You need to reduce it at least 50% to 2.5 volt. And this is not only capacitors, it's uh, also in, in volt in, uh, in current and power and junction temperature. So all the designs should be derated and not running at the maximum rating of the component. So, you know, inside the bare board world, right, we do things, say, inside of a tool like Altium Designer, we do, we run design rule checks, and then once the bare board's made, we do a bed of nails test, and there's testing at assembly. Why do the type of field failures that you're talking about happen when the board's gone through so much testing um, before it, it hits the field. Okay, I need also to tell you a story. So w- what we did uh, five years ago, we uh, cooperate with a few telecom companies and we got a uh, thousand of field failures. So we analyzed the field failures with the root cause and uh, we found it. And then we saw that if uh, we make a small the change in the design and then this failure will not occur in the field. So we build up, uh, we collected about 200 rules. And uh, if you check them now in the design, uh, you are sure that the product will not fail in the field. But uh, what happened that uh, when you do a test and you try to find those errors, you cannot find uh, test all the combinations and uh, some of the errors or some of the failures are glitching to to the customer. And then it's a big disaster and can be lost a lot of money. So what uh, what we have seen that all, uh, all our customers uh, that use the technology, um, the integration test and the qual test and the field test, they don't see any more failures. So uh, the, the, they started to do that on all their boards and they also they ask also the subcontractors to run those simulations on their boards so they are sure that what they get is a uh, robust okay so is this sort of the basis of um simulation tool that you developed i believe it's called fixed stress um fixed is, stress, right okay so tell us a little bit about some of those combinations and things and how you came to to choose these or sort of back into these things that you're checking for field reliability okay uh, 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 first of all the uh, all the um, mtbf uh, reliability issues are statistical and you need a lot of field failures uh, field data to get the numbers but it's after and we want to find something which is before mm-hmm. so we first of all um, we developed the simulation tool that uh, calculates the stress level about the components. But uh, since the design was in, in uh, not mature, let's say, and during the design, they have still errors and some shortcuts. And uh, we calculated high current. 
And then the customer or the designer say, oh, okay, I don't believe, I think um, your simulation is wrong. So when uh, we do a design review, we found the problems in the design. So then I started to think, okay, what I will do if I want to detect the, the shortcut before. Mm -hmm. So then we developed the schematic review. So today we have two main modules, the schematic review, which detect design errors, the 200 rules with additional that the user can add by an editor. And the, we have the schematic, the stress analysis and the rating that checks the level of stress above the component. So there are, those two tools are running in a, in a combination. After that, we can do a thermal analysis and MTBF prediction, which complete the analysis for the designer. So all of this analysis basically reviews basically how the components are interacting with one another and the stress that they will be experiencing as a finished product, but at the schematic level, is that correct? Yeah, so what we do, the input to our tool is the BOM, the bill of materials, and also the netlist. And also the ICD, it's been the signals on the connectors and the loads on the connectors, because we need to fully load and power the circuit as in real, in the field. And uh, what happened when we did one by one, it was okay, we found the problems. But later on, we did integration between several boards to a system. And then we found that another layer of failures by the connections between the, the PCBs. Mm. And uh, so we went into another level of analysis, a uh, multi-board that you can find system level problems and there is no limit uh, of the number of assemblies that they, that you can connect them together to have a system and um, customers they like it so you and i were talking about a couple of boeing crashes one that was just earlier this week which is a you know tragic failure um Tell us about the impact you're seeing to your customers as they're able to sort of simulate and catch some of these things ahead of time. So we don't know exactly what happened with those uh, aircrafts, mm -hmm. but um, uh, what I heard is, is was something about the CPU or something like the computer on, on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, some safety, safety elements that the pilot was not... Um, uh, 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 trained to use them. Uh, so we don't know exactly, but uh, what I see uh, from our customers, from their benefit, um, uh, in the past they have failures in the field, right now it's almost zero. So this means that um, the, the product can survive long, a long time, and because the design is, uh, is good and robust, it's uh, very, um, very good for the um, and customer that the product is robust. Yeah, and so what kind of applications um, are you seeing people adopting your tool and, and, and how that impacts their particular applications? Uh, mostly in uh, big systems, um, harsh environment like uh, aerospace, defense, but also in trains, automotive, um, ships, telecom, uh, gas and oil, um, uh, server farms, wind farms, power distribution. Um, let's say they can have a small mistake in the design mm -hmm. and they can lose millions, tens of millions and, uh, and um, the money which will they save from those uh, uh, failure, they can use our software many years. Yeah, I can see that. Um, <clears throat> What kind of, um, so you're obviously based in Israel. Um, right. Where, what's your market reach geographically? Uh, right now we are in the U.S., uh, in Canada, in Brazil, uh, all over Europe, uh, Germany, France, Italy, UK, uh, Sweden, Netherlands. And also we sold to China, which is interesting, <laughs> uh, to Singapore. Uh, to Japan, and now we are starting to uh, Korea. Amazing! That's a that's a great reach. So, how do you, you know, obviously you came to Altium Live, and and you have a mind to to get the word out about this 
this nice solution. How do you get the word out to, to get that kind of reach, Isaac? Okay, this is very interesting also. We are a small company in Israel. We don't have a lot of marketing, but it's done uh, by mouth to mouth. So okay. we have the customers, they tell the other customers, and uh, we have big customers that ask the subcontractor to use our technology. So it come uh, what uh, from mouth to mouth, uh, someone heard that uh, uh, someone saved money using our software, so he came also. And um, last year we did only in the company as a service, 500 boards, which is a lot of boards, uh, in what uh, it's a lot of, it was also a lot of pressure of our people here mm-hmm. to 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 um, to provide the results of those uh, boards, and um, they are coming more and more because they see the benefit what they get. So, Isaac, are you providing this as a service, or are you selling the software, or both? Okay, so at the beginning um, we started as a service. And some of the companies, they are used to continue using the service, but uh, they are moving to buy the software. So they, we teach them how to use it because it's a really new uh, technology, a, a new concept. And as you said, not many people are, think, uh, are thinking about derating and stress. Mm-hmm. And suddenly they, are, they understand that stress is the problem. And, uh, and uh, most of the field failures comes from the stress. And uh, we are the engineers mm-hmm. need to listen to the customer and try to give them a better product. And our tool can help a simple in the design, running a simple simulation to detect those errors and provide a, a report. And the, it's not only a report, it's a back annotated to the schematic and show can show you on the schematic in Altium, the component which is a problem and what is the problem, and then you can correct the design. That's amazing. Well, what I love most about it is really not only you're protecting millions of dollars commercially but it sounds like you're protecting people's lives in case of military or aerospace and you know medical some of these applications yeah um so we we have a lot of uh, experience Uh, we learned about how system fail how they operate so we build up those rules in our system that uh, will uh, avoid those uh, problem based on our experience Right. Well, that's great. So, Isaac, I will make sure to share your your uh, video from your talk at Altium Live as well as your slide deck. Um, and will you please share with me a link to your website and any other data or case studies or things so our listeners can learn more about you? Okay, I, but I will do that uh, later, not now. Yes, not now. Um, <laughs> just before we get this out to our listeners. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a delight to learn more about you and PQR and uh, the reliability that you're offering in the field. I'm sure engineers will be glad to learn more about you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Again, this has been Judy with the On Track Podcast. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, remember to always stay on track. We'll be right back.